I got one bug done, and I think I tested two or three, so it's pretty good. Um, people are still, like, coming in, but I think we're going to get started because we're running a little bit late. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead. Um, so hi. Everyone pretty much, I think, knows me or has heard of me. My name's Chad. Um, I've been pretty obsessed with the Joomla framework. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a hobby that takes over my life, and I spend too much time playing around with it. Um, I'll tell you just... having a set of libraries that allow you to be super, super flexible. <laughs> and uh, so after doing a bunch of the work, um, which involved going to namespacing and using Composer and getting rid of dependencies between the libraries, um, we have an end result of a really, really set of flexible code that lets us do a lot of really cool stuff um, in terms of app development. And here's some of the benefits uh, of doing this. First of all, we can select specific packages that we want to use. When we had the platform or when we had the CMS, uh, you wanted to use something specific and you had to get everything. Uh, you couldn't just say, I want to use one or two packages and uh, not have to get everything else with it. So it was a lot of overhead. Um, so by doing this change, we don't have all that overhead. Uh, we can also leave the platform alone. The CMS can get onto the platform when they're good and ready. And we also get a lot of major code improvements, um, like namespacing, which allows us to interface with other libraries and be compatible with them and work with the autoloaders and all of that really cool stuff. A big thing that came with the framework is this thing called Composer. And Composer is this really cool thing. And you know, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's dependency management. And this right here is how we label uh, dependencies. We simply say, I want a specific Joomla framework package, like Joomla application. And Composer will read that and say, they want the application, go get it and install it for them. But the really cool thing about this is the application has its own set of dependencies. And as the developer, I don't really want to know what those are or care what they are. I just want Composer to deal with that for me. And so we have recursive dependency management. It's not just, I'm going to get the Joomla application and then find, oh, the application actually requires a few other things. Composer will automatically look at the Joomla application uh, require statements and see that, oh, it has a few other dependencies, and it'll go get all of them for, them, for, for us. On top of that, if any of these have dependencies, Composer will automatically go to those packages and get all of those dependencies as well. So uh, by saying, I want one thing, we end up getting everything else that we need to run. Uh, it's a good thing. Um, the bad thing is right now we have a lot of dependencies, really more than we need. And so we're trying to get rid of as many as we can so we can keep things as, as light as possible. Okay. We're going to do the fun part. 
a little bit of roller coaster ride, I have a video that I hope I could find. Yeah. Um, and this is, I'm going to set up the project folder and get Composer ready to go. So um, I'm using the command line here because I'm going to end up doing stuff in Composer and it, it works out. Um, I'm going to create a directory and I'm going to go ahead and enter that directory. And I'm going to create a new file called composer.json. And then I'm done. Uh, yeah. So now I have this file called composer.json. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these contents. And you can see this is a JSON encoded string. And uh, I'm just going to give it uh, a name, a description. The keyword is pretty much optional. I didn't put any keywords in it. And you can see here I specified I want the Joomla application. And I can also specify a version number. Um, in this case, we haven't actually released anything. So the version number is dev master, which is just the master repository. Um, in the future, once we start going towards having releases and version numbers, I'll be able to say, I want version 1. And I'll know that I'll never get anything that's changed with that version, because I've specified exactly which version I want. And I had an issue as I was putting together this presentation where I had written a bunch of stuff. And then a bunch of code got committed, and my presentation didn't work the next day. Um, so <laughs> I don't know who to blame for that. But uh, as soon as we get off, uh, off the dev master and we're able to specify a version number, that issue is going to go away. Um, and you can see I've got down here um, another package, the Joomla compatibility package. And I've also specified um, PHP. So uh, Composer runs off of PHP. And Depending on the version of PHP that I'm running Composer on, if it's not the minimum uh, version right here, uh, Composer will say, oh, I'm not, not going to do this because you don't have the right version of PHP. So it helps manage those issues. Composer has a command line installer. And this is uh, a screenshot of me running it. And you can see right here, I run the PHP command line, and I specify the Composer run file and I run the command install. And it's going to start going through and pulling down all the dependencies and writing the file. So I have another video. All right, so here's the composer JSON file. There's the contents. I'm going to save it. And it's going to take too long because my video is messed up. But yeah, OK. So here I'm doing uh, that. And I'm running the install command. And here we go with Composer. And it's downloading. It's checking all the requirements. It's figuring out what it needs. And it's going to start installing all of the libraries. Takes a few minutes. Um, it's Composer. So Composer has a, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's the autoloader. And you can see all the files that came down. I only asked for one. I asked for application. But I got a lot more than that. All right. Stop that there. So here's what I ended up with. Um, oh, let's see the application package right here. OK, so it downloaded all of these files from my Composer JSON file. And it put them all, in this case, it put them in, in this vendor directory. And depending on all the different people that I get libraries from, it puts them in different folders. So in this case, I've got something from Composer. I got a lot of stuff from Joomla. If I had asked from something uh, for a package from Symfony, it would go in a Symfony folder. If I asked for something from Laravel, it would have put it in the Laravel folder, Zend, all of that, all that stuff. And uh, so that's the namespacing stuff that keeps conflicts from happening in the code and in the packages. So specifically, I wanted to work with the application package. That's the one that I really wanted. And so you can see here, the application package 
has its own composer.json. So that's how the recursive dependency management in Composer ends up working out. And we can take a look. This is the Composer JSON for application. And we can see here's all the dependencies that it listed. And you can see those are the ones over there selected that it brought down. And all the other files or all the other uh, folders are other dependencies that these packages had to run. So it just went and grabbed everything it needed in a tidy little lightweight set of libraries for me. <clears throat> so here's the really cool thing, the autoloader. This is like the coolest toy ever, OK? <clears throat> the autoloader allows you to specify one file and automatically start using classes without requiring all of them. So you don't have to say require Joomla application, require Joomla file system, all this stuff. You just say require the autoloader. Composer automatically generates that autoloader. And you can just start using classes, and it just loads them when it needs them. So that's pretty neat. So how are we going to use this? This is the structure underneath the Joomla vendor folder. So we've got the, uh, the library name, application, and it's Joomla. So this is another piece of namespacing. If we ended up with two different packages named application from two different uh, vendors, it would keep them namespaced under the Joomla thing, under the Joomla name. And there is a naming convention. So if you're familiar with namespacing, this is the use right here. And it goes along with the folder structure. So here we say use Joomla application, and I'm asking for the abstract web application class. And you can see here, we start right here, application, uh, Joomla application, abstract web application class. So this falls in line with that right there. So that's how you're going to start setting up all your uses for everything you need. <laughs> OK, here's the code part. And I cheated a little bit and recorded it. Is it big enough? I can make it bigger. Typos included. So why do you use uh, color uh, lines? I mean, um, uh, the backslash. That's how the name. So this is the namespacing uh, separation character, uh, and that's just what's been specified in PHP. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to extend the web application class, if I can type it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I've already looked at the class, and I kind of know uh, some of the properties. So uh, there's this class called do execute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to override it. And I'm going to access another function. And I'm going to add my own content. Now that I've got my class extended and I've overrided the execute function, I'm going to instantiate a new class, I guess, and uh, run the execute. Yep, OK. So that's our completed file. And now we can actually execute this application. Uh, I guess I do have a video for that. One more quick little short video. No, actually, I'm not using that video. I have this uh, set up uh, differently. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was not good. OK, so now oh, I've executed. That's, that's the file. 
it's all there. And what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to um, actually do, sorry, this part of the presentation I didn't quite figure out. We didn't do that video. I did that one live. Okay. Um, I'm going to start doing some other code that I didn't record. We'll see how this goes. I want to connect to a database. And kind of the point of, of building that app is I want to show you guys, as extension developers or people who have written components, how you can do things that you're used to doing in Joomla using the framework. And hopefully that will mean it's a little bit more familiar to you. Um, so. Let's do that. I'm going to connect to a database. Danger, we are opening up the code editor live, and we'll see how things go. Uh, right here. <coughs> so here's my code editor. Can everyone uh, read that? Um, there we go. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this. And I want to connect to a database. So I've already got the database class. It came down with the application. And I'm just going to say, remember the folder structure? We've got Joomla. And um, I want database. And in this case, uh, the database driver is the class that I want. So I've got that. I'm going to go down here. And there is a constructor. And I'm just going to um, override that a little bit. And I'm just going to get the parent. Come on, there we go. And I'm going to do this new function called get database. And the database driver has a, oops, get instance. And in the get instance, we're going to give it an array. And you can do this, obviously, from a configuration file, and that would be the, the proper way. But I'm just going to hard code these values. Um, And in this case, because we're using the framework, um, I haven't set up a prefix, and I really don't need one. So I'm not going to put one. All right, I've got that. Uh, now all I need to do is actually use it, right? So I'm going to go down here. And if you're familiar with doing uh, JFactor get database, this will look pretty familiar. In this case, I'm going to do my app, get database. And now I have that database class uh, object I can start doing things with. So you'll, you'll recognize some of the things here.
And now I've got All right, let's see what happened. All right, here we go. I'm pulling stuff from the database. Pretty slick. Uh, and I, it's pretty much, at this point, straightforward uh, Joomla stuff. It's just, instead of having things like JFactory, I've got to go set that stuff up myself. Um, I've got one more short example. Again, I'm trying to show you how you do things that you would normally do in a component. Uh, inside of the application. So another big part uh, of doing things in a component is dealing with inputs, setting inputs, getting inputs. So I have the input class, and we're going to play with that. So here's input, and I know that this is the input that I want. So similar to database, I'm going to go up here to the, my constructor, and I'm going to get input. And then I'm going to add a function down here for it. And yeah. In this case, I'm going to actually instantiate a new instance because there's no get instance method for get input. This is one, this one is super easy. Okay. Ah, very good. Just checking. All right. We go to here. There's my get input object familiar with that. And now I can actually start setting things. OK. All right, and now I know my value is popping out. So um, that's mostly uh, the basis of building an application. It's pretty simple in this case. Um, let me get back to, yeah. Are you not entertained? Okay. <laughs> um, I read on the mailing list the other day, uh, someone was asking about a lot of this stuff. And they were going, where's, where's the factory? Where's uh, all the stuff that I'm used to having? And they were pretty confused. But the, uh, the point here is that it's a blank slate. It is something for you to get in there and play with. The, the things that Joomla has are there, but they're not sitting in some file already set up for you. This is your application. This is for you to figure out and you to determine. So you're going to have to do a little bit of thinking about how you want to design that and build it. Um, the J Issues project, is anyone familiar or following J Issues at all? Know what I'm talking about? You are, you are. OK. So J issues is probably my favorite example, mostly because it's the only other widely uh, adopted example of using the Joomla code in the wild besides you know, in, in other companies um, that the community is looking at right now. And it's using all of this really cool new stuff. Um, so if you want to look at another example outside of the CMS uh, about how this stuff is getting used and implemented and worked on, that's a really good place to check and look. If you are interested in helping out getting out the first release of the framework, we could really use some help. Some things that we're focusing on right now is um, finishing documentation. Uh, we have a bunch of really cool documentation uh, in readme files and all the packages. It's not quite done. I started working on it. I got distracted. had to work on this. So um, I'm going to get back into it as soon as I get back try and finish it, and we're going to try and get out this release. The other, other, other thing that we need to uh, work on is reducing dependencies. I only asked for one package, and I got like seven or eight. 
So that's probably more than we really want. So I, uh, we need to focus on making it so that each package is a little more modular, a little more discrete, and doesn't have quite as many dependencies. Even though we have a great dependency manager, we shouldn't need to pull down seven or eight dependencies for one little tiny thing. OK? Um, questions? Comments? Cool example? Bad example? CLI, so yeah, actually I should have mentioned that. So the CLI is, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a command line interface. The framework has a CLI class, and it's actually really cool. There's a bunch of examples on CLI, and there's like no examples on web apps. So uh, I think there's a repo. Elin, what's the repo for the CLI stuff? Um, it's, well, there's a few. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. So. Oh, and Jay, uh, right. Well, I have a, a thing I have, which is if you go to my repo, I have Red Bay Shell Project. That's what I'm talking about. And we're moving, we have a, a project in the official site that's called Jack. And that's going to be, which I can't remember what it stands for, but David made up the acronym and it's like three minutes something. And that has a few, but we're building that up and it's 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 pretty nice actually. I mean so we yeah. like to we like to do have people have a team brush the the um the Drupal uh C L I package, but we want to do like brush but a little something better. So that's um that's the Yeah, so there's a, the GitHub package, right? Um, and I have I'm, I'm not said the word yet, but I'm sure you're all waiting for me to say web services, right? It's, uh, it's like the the new SE, all the SEM expert, you know, it's the term to throw around. Um, web services is really, really big, and uh, the fr the framework is uh, got a lot of packages dedicated to doing things with web services, and it's probably going to become uh, kind of our our marketing, you know, way of saying that this is why our framework is awesome because we have so much stuff with web services, and the GitHub package is a perfect example of that. Um, it's one of the packages. I didn't download it because I haven't used it, um, but JIssues is a you know obviously heavily reliant on the GitHub stuff, so it's using GitHub package the GitHub package pretty extensively. Um, did you want to say something else about it or? Oh, okay. So yeah, if you want to see a CLI app with another package, um, the GitHub project, the or the uh, the JIssues project uses CLI and GitHub to download all the issues from GitHub and populate a database. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't have a CLI example because I'm not a CLI guy. <laughs> okay. Yep, I do, I've done that too. Well, just basically using JSON um, interaction with the server, the whole u using a component within Joomla was far too slow. You were getting vast amounts of value that you didn't need. So writing a really small standalone app that does as little as possible mm -hmm. is basically an API from the database. So how would you do that sort of thing here within the existing CMS framework? Because you haven't got all the... Within the CMS? Yes. So. I would just run it in its own folder. I would. I don't know if I would. So I don't know like the structure, but I would just. I'd build my my app, my my framework app. And is it? It's dependent on the component, or well, well, it, it, it's okay, doing it, stuff no, for it, the component. Code. Right. All it needs is the, the library from Joomla, which is basically what you've done. Oh, okay. So it needs other libraries. Right. Uh, so basically, I just for the video. I correct me if I'm wrong, but you have you want to use other framework packages 
within the CMS that are not no, currently there? Actually, or actually, even less, less than the whole of the current CMS. What I've done in my department, but it, like, yeah. Right. But right. the loader is what, like, like the loader is there, and I mean, with the CMS, you already have the, the factory. You have a factory, so you can have make your own factory. But with the CMS, you have our factory, running. So you actually, I mean, you don't have to do much. You you have to, you can do less because you just already, if you use that factory, are loading the data to my database. <laughs> Stuff. So that's what that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the fine training and CMS stuff to work. Yeah. 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 Y